All right, guys, so our next guest really needs no introduction. Over the past 12 months, he's completely taken over social media with over 150 million impressions per month. He's the number one sales trainer in the world, and just by hanging out with him for a little bit, I can tell why. His energy is infectious, his message is powerful. Here's Andy Elliott on the Marig experience. This man needs absolutely no introduction. Andy Elliott, um, the number one sales trainer in the world right now. Um, I'm, I'm honored to, to have him here. I'm honored to share this stage with them. And, uh, you know, I'm bringing in my brother and Caesar here just to, to pick your brain a little bit. How's, how's, uh, how's your flight into El Paso? It's amazing. And number one, I want to tell you, number one, I'm grateful. At the end of the day, we're all nobody until we're somebody, right? And if somebody's watching this right now, I would tell you to grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, take notes. What's written will be retained. We're gonna give out some information today that I'm positive there's gonna be a $10,000 idea, a $100,000 idea, a million dollar idea, and there might even be a $100 million idea. So be ready to learn, and when you get people together like this, iron sharpens iron, it's all a brotherhood, you're a part of our family. Um, I'm grateful to be here, we flew in so that we could change some people's lives today. Of course, right? of course. So, so, so that's what we're gonna do. But I'm grateful here, good flight, we got in at 2 a.m., love it. Love it. Yeah. First time in El Paso? Yes, it is, it's awesome, beautiful place. Cool. Um, one thing that I wanted to right off the bat talk about is when I first spoke to Selena, she, she said something to me that really uh, you know, stood out with me, which was, I got your back for life. Where does the saying, I got your back for life, and then when, when you sent the video and, and you know, we were, we've been messaging back and forth, I got your back for life, where does that come from? Yeah, so number one, the first thing we're going to write down is out carry your competition. That's the first thing we're going to do. Okay, so if we're talking about people selling more real estate, doing better in life, you know, anything, right? What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do it at a level in which no one has seen before, which that's what we all need to do. That's what we must continue to do. And us as leaders, we must teach our people to do that. When Selena came to work for us, I said, there's two things that we care about. And God gave them both to you, the most important things in the world. Number one, your heart. Okay, people hear your mouth, but speak with your heart. When you speak with your heart, you automatically rise above everybody else running their mouth. So that's number one, speak with your heart. Number two, your mind. God gave you a mind. When you were born, he gave it to you. It was free. Most people, when something's free, they don't take advantage of it. Because if you don't pay for it, you won't pay attention, right? Mm -hmm. Dude, if I gave you a free training course, and I'm not saying disrespect you, but like mm -hmm. anybody, they wouldn't use it. They wouldn't do it. But if you paid me 10 grand for it, you'd get your money out of my ass. Skin in the game. Yeah. And so <laughs> the deal is, is that I, we explain to our coaches that we are people that play with the heart. Hey, I take stuff personal. You know, they say in business, don't take these things personal. I take things personal. Look, I surround myself with people that I believe in. I surround myself with people that I love. I surround myself with people that I want to do life with. I'm going to take it personal. Okay, and that's why I always say, you know, audit your circle. Audit the people you're around. So, Selena is a byproduct of me, right? Now, I want you to understand what that means. Selena has gone through an entire year and a half training program. She spent $25,000 learning the way that I think. Okay? The way that I love, the way that I care, the way that I treat my wife, the way that I am with my kids, the way that I am with my family, and how everything is possible and this universe will give you whatever you want as long as you'll be the elite, the top 1% in the industry, which everybody's qualified to do, right? It's just a decision. So when she comes on, you say, oh, hey, you know, why, why would she be this way to me? Why would she be excited? Why would she have this energy? Why would she say, I got your back for life? You know why? because she's decided to make her clients the center of her universe. You're gonna to learn today that we're gonna go on stage and you're gonna see some people speak and talk and they're talking from a place of authority but they want you to know what they've done. What I wanna do is let them know what they can do. Okay. And that's where the money's made. Remember, without people, there's no money. Without relationships, there's no money. Without treating people different, people won't always remember what you said, but they'll always remember the way you made them feel. Do you remember the way when Selena spoke to you, though, and she said, I got your back for life? Yeah. Do you remember the love, the energy? Do you remember the commitment? Like, she was like, hey, if you commit, I won't let you down. Okay, yeah. but you got to commit. And if you do, we won't let you down. That's the secret. All these real estate agents, anybody doing a transaction, anybody talking to somebody, this is the secret. 
COVID reset the bar for all of us. Three years we built a nine figure business. Why? Best thing that happened is that a lot of guys were up here, they didn't give a shit. COVID said you gotta wear a mask stand six feet apart. Boom! Wiped everybody out. All of us underdogs got a chance to go take the Goliaths out. Mm -hmm. And we did. Everybody can do the same thing. For anybody watching this right now, out carry your competition. When I say I got your back for life, what does that mean? That means if you commit, I won't let you down. Ironclad handshake. Look in my eyes. I'm going to look in your eyes. This is what I'm going to provide. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it. And so, you know, we want people to know that, look, there's lots of programs you can get in. There's lots of people you can buy a home from. There's lots of realtors um, that can, can um, you know, get you to buy that house or show you a home. There's lots of people that can do your loans. But people that truly and generally care about people are very hard to come by anymore. People want money. People want wins, but people don't want to help other people. So our company, we don't sell nobody nothing. We help people. And that comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyways, that's what I'm saying. When she said she got your back for life, not to run long on that, she is brainwashed to believe that her reasoning to be here is to serve other people and give other people a better life. And by the way, in sales, take all the pressure out of a deal and make it easy. You know what I've learned is in, in real estate, there's so many um, papers you have to sign. There's so much big, they're like, oh, I know it's a lot of money. It's not a lot of money, man. <laughs> Listen, it's not a lot of money. You know what's a lot? Going through life knowing you're only going to get one and not being able to make a decision for you and your family to put yourself in the dream home you always wanted. That's hard. Say no to the other shit. Say yes to the right stuff. Come yeah. on, man. Of course. <clears throat> All your memories are going to get made in this house. Not in the mall. Not over there. Right here in this thing. Your whole life, your whole family's going to grow up here. This is easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the easiest decision ever. Do you love your family more than anybody else? Then put them in a home they love and have a great life. It's just a decision. Or don't settle for less and have a crap life. Yeah. I'm telling you because I believe that. But this is, this is how that I would speak to anybody. And by the way, I'm going to tell you one more thing. Love don't lie. When you guys speak to people with love, they can look in your eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. So I can look in his eyes and I can see his soul. I see his soul right now. I see my people's soul. I saw my client's soul. I can tell when I'm talking to somebody and he's like, you know, is it Julio? Yes, sir. Right? I said, Julio's like, you know, like, oh yeah, I don't, I can tell he's nervous. Hey, no, no, like, I, but if I was doing a transaction with him, he's not nervous, he's a killer, but I'm saying, what if he was my client, he was nervous? I'd say, Julio, listen, I've been doing this for a long time, okay? And at this part of the deal, a lot of people have never had somebody that wants to go with them through the journey to help their family get their dream life. Julio, that's me, and I want you to look at me. And I'm gonna take my hand right now. Okay, you see it, Julio? Yeah. And my grandpa taught me whenever I put this hand out like this, it's called an ironclad handshake, and I shake your hand. Whatever I say I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do. Yeah. When you say yes right now, you just said yes to giving your family the best life ever, and they trust you to do that. Do you understand that? Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure that I won't let you fail once you commit. This home, this home's gonna change y'all's life. This home's gonna remind you that you are the man that does take care of your family. This home's gonna remind you that nothing is impossible and life is limitless. You deserve it, look at me. Yeah. Now, don't let him look away, say, look at me. You see that? No, but I'll say, I'll say, you broke you, bro. No, but I'll say, look at me. Don't let him look away and say, look at me. Say, hey, like, I want you to know this. Yeah. Nobody's ever cared this much about you and your family than me right now. Julio, let's wrap this up. That's a closing. That's yes. a closing right That's there. That's a closing. But, that, but why, I told him, hey, don't look away. Look at me. We're yeah. in this why? together. We're in this together. Why? I said, look at me. Because I want you to see my eyes. I want you to look into my soul. And I want you to see what I want. I want what no one else has ever wanted you to have. That's what I want, Mario. I want what no one else has ever wanted you to have. They want you to stay small. Your old identity that you don't deserve this is still in there lurking. And your new life is the decision away. Say yes. Your kids are worth it, your wife's worth it, and you are worth it. Mm -hmm. That's it. And by the way, listen, money's easy to make. Once you start saying yes to good stuff, once you start putting your family first, once you put your back against the wall, which you're really not, but you do, you're going to rise. Money's going to start coming at you because winning recognizes you. You're making decisions and saying yes to the right things. Your whole life, you've most likely been saying no to the right things and yes to the wrong things. It's working up. That's it. And by the way, what am I doing? I'm doing a couple things here. Number one, I'm doing a pep talk. 
Okay, great closers, great reps, people that really love people, pep talk their people. Because yep. people need to be motivated, inspired to believe in themselves. Look, here's the number one thing with a sale. When you're going to sell somebody, most of the time, people don't believe they deserve this. People get a scarcity mindset because of the way that the world has programmed them or by things that they've been programmed through growing up. We are going to reprogram them. Listen, the news, it brainwashes people to be scared and feel afraid. Am I right? Of course. I'm going to brainwash people to feel strong, powerful, and they can do it. They feel it's bad to be strong. They feel it's, no, you're not supposed to be um, dominant. You're not supposed, then they teach you that, like you're saying, you're talking about the news. They teach you that or, or you listen to that every day. But, I mean, I mean, look, just looking at you, for example, a type of routine and changing your life, how is it that somebody can change your life so what is it that you do as a routine day from the sun goes up to the sun goes down what is it that you well, I'm gonna, do i'm going to tell everybody right now if you really want to know most people won't do it <laughs> no no because because they don't believe me yeah okay my wife a long time ago okay i learned to earn money i learned to make money yeah and i was i was led by bad leaders which we do have a, a lot of bad leaders in this world right now we are in a shortage of leadership in this world I was making a lot of money. I was working hard since, so at two years old, my mom left. She's a crackhead. I was raised on the streets. At second grade, I used to be gone for months. I mean, on my whole life, I'd come home. Dad's like, hey, oh, you're still alive. Stuff's good. Like, there was nothing. There was no, there was, we were raised to be losers. It's okay. I love it. I wouldn't replace it for anything. Look, people are going to suffer as a kid and kill it as an adult, or most of the time get babied as a kid, and then, and then get, get destroyed as an adult. Disappointment is the best thing you could ever have. It's so good for you. Builds character. Yeah, that's right, dude. It makes you who you are. Every time I don't get what I want, it makes me stronger, not weaker. But anyways, just this belief, um, I never had it. My dad said, get a job, stay out of jail. I wasn't very good. You know why? Because no one ever built me up and taught me to believe in myself. Okay? And that's why it's so important for us to get together. Even though that we're talking to them, us just replaying in our life how life should live, this is it, but guess what? At 18 years old, so I was so broke, I never had more than $50 in my hand at one point in my life at 18. My first day in sales, I made $1,700. I couldn't believe it. I went home to my dad. I remember I was like almost crying. I said, Dad, I made $1,700 today. My dad's like, impossible. <laughs> impossible. <laughs> that this can't was in be the possible. car business? This is in the car business. And by the way, a lot of people think I'm a car sales trainer. No, I started in car sales. My vehicle at 18 years old was the barrier of entry to get a job in a car dealership was you had to be breathing. If you were breathing, they <laughs> yeah. would hire you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm making straight Ds. I barely graduated. I didn't know how to speak. I didn't know how to talk. I was a loser. And guess what? They hired me because I showed up. Thank God that there was a broken system there. But I had a good leader right out the gate, and he goes, most doctors spent seven years going to freaking college, pay back $250,000 in student loan debt, Literally, after seven years, I have to go to residency for three years and make $60,000. So after 10 years, they have the opportunity, Andy Elliott, to make, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand a year. Opportunity. After 10 years of paying back 250 grand in debt. But in the automotive industry, if you can show up right now and you can become a student of the game, the only way to wealth is through self-education. And you can educate yourself and you'll fall in love with self-development on a level that no one else ever has before. Guess what? You can rise with no skin in the game, only training and sweat equity, and you'll rise and you'll make money. And guess what happened? At 18, I made 110 grand. At 19, I made 250 grand. And at 20, at 20 years old, I made my first $500,000. I'm going to tell everybody watching this, this story can be replicated in anybody's life watching this. All you have to do is wake up. So what's the yeah. first thing that I would tell everybody right now that I did not realize at a young age? You know how old I was when I woke up? 39 years old. I'm 43 years old. 39 years old, I finally got it. So crazy. So our goal is after two and a half years, of, or, or you know, two and a half decades of training and learning and working, I've made a lot of money. You know all that money did fall through my fingers? Every bit of it. My wife, you know what she wanted? She wanted a badass husband. You know what my children wanted? They wanted a dad that was their hero. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to look in the mirror and like who I was, which is important for all of us. Of course. But you know what I kept falling prey to? Hitting this damn sales quota. <laughs> I was obsessed because at 18, it's what got me out of the, it's what got me out of the rat race. It's what got me out of the, the freaking, the, 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 the hood. It's what got me out of freaking being broke. So 
um, there was a time and a point at which one day my wife goes, Andy, okay, we've learned to live without you. We don't live, you're at work, you're making money, you're killing it, and you think because you put us in nice cars, a nice house, in a beautiful neighborhood, you think we're good? You think I want to live without my husband? Like you think that I want, I want our kids to grow up without their dad? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm here all the time. First ego kicks right in, boom. And I start going through the pity party shit. You, I'm you don't know what I've been through. Yeah. You don't know. My mom left when I was young. I had nothing. At 18 years old, she goes, wah, 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 wah. And you're the <laughs> worst leader in the world. Why? Because you've got 50 guys at your company. You're the best closer in the world. And you haven't reduplicated yourself once. And that's why you got to get there at 7 a.m. in the morning. And you got to leave at 11 o'clock at night. Because you're the best closer in the company. It has to be about you. you got to make sure that everybody knows you're the best. And you're writing your family off. I'm like, dude. I'm so confused right now. I don't know what to do. You know what I knew? My wife said one thing that made real, a lot of sense, and this is good for all of us and good for them. She said, don't be one dimensional. She goes, who told you? I want to know who told you. And it was probably me that told me this and someone else that told me this. Who told you that you couldn't make a lot of money, be a great leader, teach your team to be better than you, which is what leaders do. Okay. Being a, that's called an alpha leader, Andy. Okay. You know, you're just, be, you're just being a showman. We need you to become a real leader. Be a great father where your children, you know, look up to you and want to be your, want you to be their hero. She goes, I want to admire you. I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm proud of you for all the money you make us, but I don't admire you. I don't look up to you. I don't want to be like you. You don't inspire me. You don't motivate us. You come home at the end of the day. You give us leftovers. You deflate That's what you do. And you know what? I realized at that point, and everybody could, could write this down, I chose, and, and this is the hard part. I chose health over money. For the first time in my life, I drew a hard line, okay? When I met my wife, she goes, look, number one, I was a, I was a player when I was young. You know, I cheated on every girl. I was just a bad kid, right? I didn't have any example. No, no, not be, and then it's not like it's a good thing, but like, I just was a piece of shit, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, I didn't value anything, you know? I mean, I never had a great woman in my life or anything, so why would I value anything that I didn't see great you know I just you don't know what you don't know you know what I'm saying and I met my wife and I go oh my god They're like this is it this is the one you know what I mean and she goes if you ever cheat on me if you ever lie to me if you ever do any of these things you're not going to get a chance to explain it I'm out <laughs> as it should be and and I know but see but I was used to girls that when they say that like that's not what happens Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, like I go cheat on you, and then I can be like, oh man, I was. I'll work I, my way out. Yeah, yeah, and then they're like, okay, well, I promise you won't do it again. No, dude, this look in my wife's eye was like, dude, she ain't playing. <laughs> yeah. And at that point, I had to make a decision, and that was my first hard line. And dude, literally, we've been 15 married, years married this year, and I'm going to tell you, dude, it's just insane what happens when you commit to something. Okay? Now, I, our relationship, I'm going to be honest, when we were younger, it was better than most. When she said she learned to live without me, we had a better marriage than almost anybody that we knew. I had a better marriage than anybody we knew. It's called a standard. My wife knew our family should be the standard for the world. Top 1% in the industry. If you can be the best in the automotive industry, why can't you be the best father in the world? Why can't you be the best husband in the world? Why can't you be in the best shape? That's one dimensional. She goes, who told you you couldn't have all this? And you know what I realized that my whole life, I've been told that you're gonna have to sacrifice. Never sacrifice your why, which is your family, your kids, and all that, and never sacrifice your health, ever. Because if you do those things, you are intent you're going to become somebody that you don't want to become. And I'm telling you, this is what I'll tell you. Choose your health over money. At this point, 39 years old, I drew a hard line in the sand. I decided that every morning, me and my wife were going to go to the gym together. I decided for the first time ever, I was going to take my family with me. Every decision, everything that we do, we were going to talk about it together. We were going to be passionate about it together and do it, or we weren't going to do it at all. I decided to totally change the way that I've been living my whole life for 39 years. This is so cool. Once I started exercising, once I started getting in shape, once I started losing my love handles, my freaking double chin and all this shit, you know what I started to see? No, listen. No, no, listen. It's just grabbing me. No, but I want to tell you what happened. I started to feel value in me again. Yeah. Dude, when's the last time you guys went, or when's the last time your wife has put her first? Her, you know, she usually puts the kids first. She puts you first. She puts the house first. Do you know if your wife put herself first, do you know the way that she would start loving you? 
do you know the stuff that she was, see, we don't ever think about her putting her first. And she feels like she has to sacrifice everything in her life and go last. Yeah. Me and my, my wife learned a rule. When we put ourselves first, not selfishly, as far as like, remember, love is what life's about. God said in the Bible, without love, you're bankrupt. Everything else can go wrong, but if you got love, you're winning. Okay? So me and my wife, when we started to love ourselves, you know what we started to do? We started to love each other to levels that were like insane. Our children started to see the way that my wife loved herself, and they started to look up to her. They started to respect her more because they saw her as not mom. They saw her as like, damn, superwoman now. Yeah, Wonder Woman. Okay, yeah. With me, my son, instead of looking up to the Hulk, now he's looking up to me. And like, I'm like noticing, I'm like, damn, man, this is all because of health. When I'm talking to my clients, they know that I'm disciplined. I got a bicep vein, they're looking at me. They can tell that I'm, I'm gonna do what I say I'm gonna do because clearly it looks like I take care of myself so I can take care of them. Money went up. Dude, I'm looking in the mirror, I like me, and all of a sudden I'm like, damn, man, I'm gonna recreate every day. I'm gonna reinvent myself every day. That's the key. Choose every morning what time you're gonna to go to the gym. Five days a week, get it done, go dark, put your phone down. This is the best advice, what is my ritual like? Go to the freaking gym and never miss it for nothing. Put your phone down, be present where you are, and guess what? Go with your wife, go with your family, and this right here, this one little thing, made me have a belief in which fed, it was a feeder system to the, to the marriage, to the parenting, to the business, to the leadership and to the team and to my own self-belief. Bradley always says, you'll never out earn your own self-worth, your own self-image. The image I had to me, me, is I had an ego, but I knew I was average. And by the way, my bank account, it never really dramatically ever shifted. It could go up or down, but into a certain point, and it never went over. When I put my health, my health first, went through the roof. Isn't that crazy? Yet there's people right now that say, nah, man, I'm, I'm broke, I need money. No, you don't. <laughs> you need to believe in yourself. Your internal voice needs to be so freaking loud. It needs to be screaming. So where anybody's around you, dude, they're like, dude, something's different yeah. about this guy. And guess what? That's the secret. So what is my routine? My routine is my team's number one, my wife's number one, my family's number one, my clients are number one. Dude, I wake up to serve people all day long, but I can't serve anybody if I don't feel good about myself and if I don't serve me. And this is the secret weapon. And if anybody can get this and try me on, I don't get depressed, I don't get sad, I don't get down, I don't get mad. So you have a heart inside of you. And what happens is when business runs high, stress gets high, your heart takes on pressure. Your valves pump harder. And you know what that is? That's a heart attack waiting to happen, bro. I swear to God in my life, it's waiting to happen. And you think that, you know, I'm a badass. No, you can be a badass here, but if this thing gets out, you're still dead. Okay, what you gotta do is you gotta get in shape. You gotta take care of the inside, the outside, and then all this starts to take care of it. And why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't we be the example for all the men that are in this world? Why wouldn't we be the example and take our wives with us and have our wives be the example for all the women? And why wouldn't we become this elite family and have our children be the example for all the other children? This is why God made us. And it took me 39 years to figure it out. And ever since I figured it out, I'm telling you, dude, listen to me. We built a nine-figure business in three years. And you guys understand money. You understand what a million looks like when you add another zero and it goes to 10, and when you add another zero and it goes to 100. Things start changing, that's a lot of money. I never could get my hands on any type of income like that. And I wasn't chasing income and it happened. I've been tricked my whole life. Health's number one. Physical, mental, business. When you're physically fit, your mental mindset goes through the roof. Your business, you're killing it. And nothing can break you because most people are breaking mentally. But instead of breaking mentally, we're going to be breaking records. Of course. This is a secret. Anyways, yeah. you guys go. But I just I want mean, to tell speaking you. Speaking of that. that, that well, yeah. my yeah. questions. Um, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of the contagious energy and breaking records, one thing that's breaking records right now is the, the record high interest rates that we're seeing. Um, record high interest easy. rates that we're seeing across, you know, what is the best rebuttal easy, for someone who says that? Easy, The guy says the rates are high. You say, hey, I totally understand. Look, however, eight months ago, if you'd have bought a house, you would have literally been in a bidding war and you'd have to spend an additional two or $300,000 more for that home or another 100,000 more for that home. But the interest rates were about 2% less. However, today, there's never been a better time in the market for a consumer like yourself to make a good deal on a home and pay a little bit more on a rate. 
Now let me ask you a question. What would you rather have, a higher payoff or a lower interest rate? You date the rate, you marry the payoff. Mm -hmm. Eight months ago, you'd have had an additional $100,000 payoff on this house. You see this house right here, Mr. Customer? Draw a picture of the stick house. See this house? Eight months ago, this house was a $300,000 house today. It was a $400,000 house eight months ago. $400,000 at 7%. If you were to pay the house off today, how much do you have to pay off? $400,000 eight months ago. Today, the market has come down a little bit on homes. It's not a bidding war. Would you guys agree there was a massive bidding war going on? There was, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, guess what? In a bidding war, they had higher payoffs. You know that being a mortgage guy. Yeah. It was a grind because everybody wanted more for their homes and people had to put more cash down to buy these houses. Am I right? Sure. But today they can get homes easier. The appraisals are still up. Clients aren't at a bidding war. It's easier to get people financed, right? Absolutely. But the rates are a little higher. Date the rate, marry the payoff. Listen, guys, today you're going to do a loan for 300000 Okay? The rate's going to be 9%. The feds are going to lower the rate and you're going to refinance it abracadabra when they do. But, however, listen, six months ago, eight months ago, you just spent $350,000. We interrupt this powerful message to let you know that if you're looking for a home and don't know where to start, Point Homes is here for you. With over 22 communities and beautiful amenities throughout El Paso and Las Cruces, I'm certain we can find a home for you. Give us a call today at 915-900-5009. Point Homes, we build for you. And the rate was 6%. Dude, what would you have rather owed? An additional 50,000 or got a little bit of a lower rate? Yeah. Yeah, you date the rate, you marry the payoff. Anybody that's familiar with money will understand that rates will always fluctuate and go up and down. When they go down, you refinance, and when they go up, guess what? If you make a good deal on the place, you buy it, and then when they go down, you refinance it. That's exactly what you guys are going to do today. And I'm going to tell you, a little birdie told me that property values are about to go up again with high rates. So in the future, you're going to be paying more again in bidding wars with high rates. Today, it's the best time for a consumer to make a deal. And guess what? You leverage the rate we can get today. Hell, isn't it exciting you don't have to pay cash? Yeah. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> to finance yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, <clears throat> like, dude, we're making this rate deal a problem when it's not one. The client says the rate's too high. They put out food for us to eat out of their hand. Knock that food out of their hand. Make them eat out of our hand. Knock it off. That's silly. Listen to me, eight months ago, a year ago, there were bidding wars going on, on that same property. It was $100,000 more. If that home was $100,000 more, would you have bought it with the 2% better rate? No. Okay, so today you love the price of the property. You know it's a good deal. The bank's willing to leverage you the money at an interest rate so you don't have to pull it out of your pocket. When it goes down, you're going to refinance it because you're just dating the rate until better one comes along. Abracadabra. Magic. Sign here. <laughs> but whoever is doing the talking must look at them with their eyes, must talk to them like it's no big deal. I teach my guys when I'm closing, I always say, guys, say, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. You have to understand when somebody says something, no big deal. De-escalate. Yes, it's no big deal. Well, well, but it's not a big deal. Listen, when people have a concern and they have a worry, we can't have a concern in our words. Say, hey, I totally understand. I get that. However, you need to realize everything in life is perspective, okay? The rates really aren't high. The fact that we can get money is a blessing, right? Because you don't have the money to pull out of your, your, your bank account right now. So the bank's willing to leverage you money. I remember going back 15 years ago, rates were 19% and people yeah. were happy to do loans, okay? So the difference between six and nine and three and six, there's no, there's no difference there. The fact is, what I always look at is what am I going to be owing? And now that I'm not in a bidding war and I actually get to make a great deal, damn, man, this is exciting. Our people need to start, by the way, so I'm going to say this, it's called transfer of emotion. If you want to close, you need to learn how to influence and persuade. And what does persuasion mean? Persuasion means transfer of emotion. What does transfer of emotion mean? It means I'm going to take the way that I feel and I'm going to push it into you. That's my job. What does that mean? State, S-T-A-T-E. What does a person do when they buy something? They've got to be in a good state. Do you buy shit in a good mood or a bad mood? Good mood. Hell yeah. yeah. So when you're thinking about money and interest rates are high, but I'm your rep, I'm your client, I'm the realtor, I'm the broker, I'm, I'm, I'm the finance person, right? <laughs> if I'm not in a good state, how's that going to make you in a good state want to say yes? Do people buy in a good mood or a bad mood? Good mood. Oh, we want people to say yes or no. Yes. Then be in a good mood. Okay. By the way, what, what puts us in a good mood? Has anybody ever walked out of the gym mad? No. 
dude, you want to be in the best mood ever? When you start out your day working out, you're in a great mood for the next 12 hours. Yeah. All this is a feeder system. Back to step one. That's yeah. it. Number one, dude, listen to me. And by the way, don't go in there and play around. Put your phone down. Pick a challenging program. Get around, everybody needs a coach. I want to say this right now. I have coaches. I pay a lot of money in coaches. I probably pay about 200 grand a year in coaches. Okay? Dude, the ROI on real estate, I don't know. It's probably 7%. I'm not sure. But I know the ROI on self-investment, it could be 1,000%. Any chance you get to invest in yourself, do it. But I'll tell you, and to learn this stuff. And I always say, like, my, my, my goal is to find people that have gone where I want to go, and then I, I want to ask them, how much does it cost me to study you? Or how close can I get in proximity to you? The world's your library right now. We're in an era of 2023, right? Like, this is crazy. Like, we can learn from people. You can, you can go pay Ed, Ed Milet enough money, and he'll teach you everything he knows. Isn't that crazy? That's never existed before. You, Andy Frazella, you, you, David Goggins, you can go find anybody. Who, who do you want to learn from? You can pay them, and they'll teach you. What a beautiful freaking era. Yeah. We have no excuses. So I always say this to my guys. What's it going to cost? More than you want to pay. If you want the dream, you got to be willing to pay the price. I, I uh, had a question for you. I had seen a video recently where somebody asked you for a job and you said, you're going to work for me. We're going to put you through boot camp. I don't make you throw up. And in an industry like ours, you know, turnover is, 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 is pretty high. What did you mean by that? Like physically put them through boot camp? Or do you have like a mental procedure to get these people on, on pace with you to actually be employed by you and, and, and gain that from you? Well, so, so number <clears throat> one, okay, I don't want to walk on eggshells around people that don't believe the same as me. Okay, so you want to make a lot of money, and you're like, I need more people. Okay, well, that's a given. More people, more money. But the wrong people cost you money. Okay? So when you go out, who do you want to look for? People that believe the same way you believe. People that believe the same way you believe. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay, so number one, whenever somebody comes in to interview with me, I say, hey, listen, listen, I believe in a game called physical mental business. When I walk into the office, my job is to be infectious to you, be magnetic to you, and bring good energy to your life. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It's a two-way street here. Your job is when you come into the office to also be magnetic to me, to be infectious to me, and I want to be around people that I want to do life with. This isn't a job, guys. It's my life. So, like, let's quit calling it a job. This is life. This should replace it with job. Jobs are for people with salaries. We're, none of us are salary employees here. Okay? So this is our life. This is 25-7, 365. Okay? So who do I want to be around? People that are my family. People that I trust, people that are loyal to me, people that are on my same same path as me and my mission. So whenever I say, like, we're going to exercise you first, you know why? Because I want to know if you're going to quit. Look, dude, if, if we go on a three-mile run and you start walking, and I say, hey, no big deal, come on, let's go. We're going to pick it up, we're going to start jogging again. And you go, I don't want to. Not my guy. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, our shit's a grind, man. Yeah. Okay? I want someone who's willing to push through with me. I need to know you got my six. Okay, I got yours, but dude, you know what I'm so sick of? Leaders, they go hire these people that don't have the same beliefs and then wonder why they can't build a team like this. Dude, listen, you got 8 billion people in this world. How many people do you need? 50? Holy shit, well, that's easy. Yeah. At 8 billion, we need 50? Okay, now we need to decide what do we want? What do we want our people to look like? How do we want them to think? How do we want them to believe? Okay, and guess what? We're going to tell people up front that our goal is to make sure that they work for a place in which that place believes the same way that they believe. And also, we want the same thing for the person that comes here. So I'm going to ask some questions, and if at one point, you know, we realize we're not on the same page, then I'm glad we see this up front. Well, no, because you're going to go find a place that's right for you, and I'm going to find somebody that's right for me. See, the way that I treat employees, just so we're aware, I tell anybody, if they can recruit somebody on my team, I'll give you $10 million, I'll give you $100 million. I'll give you $100 million if you can recruit somebody on my team. <laughs> you know why? My team doesn't work for compensation. See, you may love earning money with your brother, right? Yeah, every day. But you don't work for your brother for money. If a, if a guy called you right now and said, I'll pay you three times what your brother's paying you, see, it doesn't matter. It's not, it's not an option, okay? Now, obviously, we're going to be so great that people will be calling every day and asking us to come to work. I tell people, hey, you're doing your job. Mm -hmm. But you know what? An unrecruitable team means this. People don't work for you for compensation. They work for you because you're their leader. And you help them have a better life with their family and for themselves. And you put them in an environment in which they feel safe. Okay? And everybody wants that. Everybody wants to feel at home. Everybody wants to feel like they found their tribe in life. Right? And once you do, there's no amount of money that will ever make you come out of that 
And if they do, they'll regret it. I had one guy at one point in time that left me a long time ago, and for nine months straight, he wore an Elliott shirt, motivational speech, sent me videos <laughs> every day. And then one day, he literally said, can I please fly out back to the, the lion's den? I, I didn't answer, and he said, I just want to come out and tell everybody what it feels like when we're not with you no more. Oh, wow. And the guy came out, and literally, I didn't even know he was showing up. Showed up at 8 a.m. in the morning, all my team's about to have their meeting, and he goes, I'm about to get on another plane and leave. I just want to tell you guys, I left here nine months ago, and I know Andy don't want ever hire me back. I'm heartbroken. I can never believe I took this for granted. This doesn't exist in the world. I want to tell all of you in this room, don't ever leave. It's horrible. Yeah. That's the kind of culture I want to see built. So we have to be very careful who, who we let come into our company because to build a, a special safe environment like this, you could have 30 Andy Elliots that are on fire and one toxic son of a bitch. Just sucking and everything 30 out. Andy Elliots can't offset one asshole. Get the assholes out. Yeah. Stop letting them come in. Tell people what you want up front. Be honest with them. Be direct. We're in a world right now that people aren't direct. Hey, and by the way, if you, if you play with your heart when you're telling somebody, you can be direct with them and they'll take criticism from you. Like if I'm talking to you and I was to reach back and grab your love handle and say, hey man, I love you, dude, but like this isn't you. This isn't you, I know you. I saw looking in your eyes, you're a killer, bro. This ain't you, okay? It's time to go forward, but if you didn't know where my heart was and you didn't know that I actually wanted you to be a badass and where my intentions are, you'd get people like, you don't grab me, what are you doing? Like, like all of a sudden we go differently. Us as leaders need to wear a heart on the sleeve. We need to show our heart up front. Hey, don't take my kindness for weakness, okay? Because we're all killers. But at the end of the day, love. We do everything out of state of love. Everything. So when you're going to bring people into your inner circle, you only get so many matches a day that you can light, right? I don't want to light my matches on people that don't care and aren't, that aren't on the same journey as me. And this is one more thing. Inner circle. My life, which is my career, my job, my people, I want my children to be able to be around these people also. And I want their children to also be around us as well. It's a family, okay? I want the wives to be involved. Oh, and by the way, we interview the wives and the husbands before we hire him. So if we were to meet Mario, and Mario's amazing, we're like, okay, Mario, cool. Um, we need to meet your wife. Ultimately, how we interview Mario's wife will determine how we, if we hire Mario. Oh, wow. I need to know, what if, I'm gonna say something to her like this. Hey, let me ask you a question, Mrs. Mario. For some reason, if Mario comes on, he's not as good as he thinks he is, which I hope he is, but he's not as good as he thinks he is. His paychecks aren't there. He's not making the money that he sees the other people making. For some reason, it's not working. In six front months from now, are you going to support him continuing on this journey to keep getting better so one day he can earn? Or after six months, are we like, Mario, you're not making enough money. We need to find a new job. Which one? Mario, don't speak. I need to listen to your wife. Because ultimately, the way that she supports him will determine what I'll have of Mario. Mario can't be here with me and let me be feeding love and power and all this into him and then go home at night and have his wife. But by the way, listen, also, here's another deal. Mario, we don't complain in our company. We train. Okay? I'll help coach you as hard as I can. If I hire you, if you're not making it, number one, it's because you're uncoachable and you lied to me. Or number two, <laughs> number two I'm not coaching you right. Yeah. It may be me. Like us leaders need to realize if somebody in our company is not doing great, shit, man, there's a good chance we're not coaching them right. Mario, when you go home at night, don't you ever complain to your wife. If you go home and play, complain to your wife, do you have a daughter? I do. Imagine this. Your daughter's 18 years old. Okay? She goes on a date with the boyfriend, and the boyfriend calls her a bad name. And she calls you and goes, Dad, this guy called me a bad name. Would you ever support them two being together again? No. No. Two years later, she's like, Dad, I'm going to marry him. You're like, no ways. <laughs> she should, by the way, you and your wife have gotten in a fight. You and your wife have gotten in a fight. Fights happen. Sometimes we say things we don't mean. Sometimes we get mad. Shit happens. Your daughter shouldn't have called you and told you about that fight. If she really wanted to see that relationship thrive and make it, and to know her father could always look in that relationship and know he was a good man, she should have never told you that. Yeah. That's the problem. She ruined that relationship because she opened her mouth. She should have worked it out with her man. You know what? At work, there's shit that ain't going to go right. There's deals that are going to unwind. There's deals that are in the closing office. You know what I mean? They're about to go down. All of a sudden, something doesn't go right. Pay stub doesn't match up. This doesn't happen. Tax returns didn't come in right. 
Wife doesn't want to sign. Damn it, what the hell, man? I was counting on the $28,000 commission. I need that. I'm seconds away from getting it. And now they're walking away? Or maybe they even signed and they got an opportunity to back out of it within the next 24, 38, 60, 40 hours. And they do. And you're like, this can't be happening. This isn't real. I know these people. Something happens. Okay. It's what we do. This is what happens. Yeah. We got to get better. But don't go home and, and shit on your family. Okay. Our job is to bring special energy. Our job is men, women, to bring special energy to the people we love. That's the good shit in life. Our kids, our wife, and our family, we must motivate them. We must bring the energy to them. We must be the special light that they see. We are the people that are going to show them love to make them go enjoy the rest of the world and learn from the father's perspective of how life should be. But yet, we go through a long day's work, we grind like hell, and we go home, and we just throw up and shit on them. Today a bad day. Today did this. Today. And you know what? No wonder your wife don't support you. No wonder when you say you're staying late at the office. She's pissed. Yeah. Because you made her hate it. But if you told her, babe, you should see these people were in the slumps and we got them a new home. I don't know how we got them qualified, but we got this amazing you know, banker over here. He was able to pull some strings. Baby, you should see how happy they are now. You should see how we're changing lives. These people believe in themselves different. They're making memories they never thought they wanted to make. In their old home, they never got their camera out recorded stuff because they were embarrassed where they live. But now they're happy, babe. You should see it. You should see it. She's like, oh my God, man, go do it. Go do more, go do more. Anyways, we most of the time ruin our family supporting us because of our mouth. So if you're taking notes, learn to master your mouth. Yeah. Okay. And, and a quick segue, and, and I know that your time is limited with us today. No, no, um, we're good. Just I, I, the tribe part of it. I can't wait to, to get you to meet our tribe, which are actually outside of these doors. I hear them already making a ruckus. Um, so <laughs> cool shit. they're excited. <laughs> yeah, they're excited. Um, one last thing, and, and this is going back to the, the uh, it's, it's going to be a shameless plug for you, but I know that you have a fitness program. I, I follow you on social media, as, as everybody should, and you have a fitness program that they have to text you for. What, where can they get a hold of you for that fitness program and to level up, as you say? Yeah, yeah so something. So, number one, we got a camera right here. Aaron, I want you to come around here real quick. I, I want to do this because this is important. I know it's a podcast. He's not mic'd up, but I, I want to show something, okay? So, I'm going to have this guy come right here. He, he's like 6'5", so I'm going to get on his knees right here. But you see this big killer, right? I always wanted to get in great shape. I always wanted to be elite. Me and my wife went to a certain level and I felt like we were maintaining. So for anybody that's watching this and wants to totally recreate, I'm not the fitness trainer. I just want to be aware, so I wanted to say as I bring this in, it's this guy. And this guy literally, he, he trained The Rock, he cha trained Zac Efron. He, who else did you train? Will Smith? Uh, Jamie Foxx, Josh Brolin, Amelia Clark. I don't want to plug everyone, but, but I, I trained a lot <laughs> no, no, of people. No, no, but by the way, he trained these people. Real quick, you know what he's there for now? His people are us. It's not Hollywood actors. That's a fake deal. When I found Aaron, he goes, dude, listen to me, man. I would get these people ready for a show so they could go make money. That's what I was doing. I had no purpose. He goes, Andy, I want heaven on earth. What's heaven on earth? It's very simple. I want to change people's lives, and I want to help them live their best life. But I want to be with real people. He, he was in Iraq. He served in, in the war. He's a killer, dude. He's a military guy. Dude, listen, he's 43 years old. He got in the, he got in the uh, military, the Marines, at 18 years old. I just took him on his first vacation at 43. <laughs> Swear on my life. This guy's been a grinder his whole life. Everything is about work. I, you talked about tribe. I brought him in. You know why? Because I would always build these people up with skill, right? I'd always build up how to speak, how to talk, how to influence, how to persuade, how to paint pictures, how to tell stories, you know, how, how to be great, like how to do this stuff. You know what I learned? They always fall back. In eight months, they're back. They go up and they go down. They go up and they go down. What's the dependable side? The fitness. So I said, I got to find me the baddest ass fitness guy in the world. And I ran into this guy in an event. And I looked him up and I saw who he is. And I told him, I said, dude, you're freaking moving to Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> He's like, what? I said, yeah, babe, we're getting him a house right now. We literally went and got him a house. We got everything. I go, bro, you're moving. It's done. We, He's like, I need to, we've already talked about it. Yeah. It's done. And guess what? Since we brought him on, this is the point. You said, give me a number, but I want to tell you guys, because he'll help you guys too, because it's not me. I'm the business guy, right? I'm not the fitness guy. This guy can literally take anyone, and I mean anyone. I'm talking if you're on medication, if you're, if you're older, if you're 65, 
or, or you're 18, you want to put on muscle, you want to lean down. It doesn't matter to him. He just needs to hear what you want to know. Okay, like what do you want? And then, and by the way, he wants to help you inside, healthy, and outside. And this is so obtainable. And in 90 days, it's called a 90-day total recreation program. Everybody that I've thrown in his program, every week they're on a Zoom call with him. He physically writes all the, uh, the programming, the dieting. He does a, consul a consultation with you. Everything. So that it's built for you, Mario. Because his is built for him. You know, he may have asthma. He may be on blood pressure medicine. You know, he may be on this. Or you may have, or you can't. It's like we, he figures it out, puts it together. Every week you're on the Zoom call. We say in 90 days your life will be totally changed. In 90 days, the total recreation program, do these people come out? They're totally changed. Swear, swear on my life, it's the craziest shit. Now, now my, my training, the, sh the stuff that I do, oh my God, now I've got killers. Now I've got warriors. Now I've got husbands that are through the roof. Now, and, and their wives are getting in it with them. And the kids are getting healthy. And this is the good stuff in life. Life is about earning it all, have it all. So turn around real quick because I want to show this. Because you're asking about numbers. Oh, I got it. Oh, shit, look at this. Look at the back of my shirt. You see this? Read this number. Earn it all. 602 900 8703. Yeah, so text, earn text, earn it all. Just text, earn it all. That's it. So, and, and you can put that on the screen. But, but anyways, earn it all. Earn it all. That's what we've been talking about the whole time, right? Yeah. I could come on here today, and I bet a lot of you thought I was just going to say, hey, man, if you want to close somebody, this is what you need to do. Yes. We've got to be closed on us. We've got to be closed, and we're so freaking lucky to have this life. This is insane. Yeah. And then guess what? Dude, we can smash anything that gets in our way. How many times do you have a great employee that you believe in, that you love, that you know they could be amazing, and something takes them out, man? They're like, I'm struggling. I'm struggling with what? With what? What are you struggling with? That's not even a problem. That's easy. I'm struggling. With what? That? You're struggling with that. You know why they're struggling with that? Because they're not freaking together. <laughs> they don't love themselves. Like, they're not, they're not ready. Were you an athlete in school? Yes, sir. Okay. You should be better. You should be the most athletic you've ever been in your whole life right now. What's the difference between Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, and us? Nothing. Nothing. Mastery. Mastery is what today's about. Mastery. What do we want to master? Business? No, 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 no. We want to master it all. Master it all. Everything right now that's a priority to you in your life, take it to the top 1% in the world. And guess what? If you can do this and you can pull this off, and by the way, get around people that will help you get what you want. Guys, stop trying to do it alone. Like, stop trying to do it alone. You know how much money it costs him? It cost me to get him here? More than I wanted to pay. <laughs> but you know what I know? It's worth it. Who gives a shit? Who cares? Mario, you're thinking in your head as we're talking. You're like, dude, if I took my fitness to another level, I could see a whole other life. That's right. Definitely. And every day, our goal as, 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 as winners is to get better every day. 1% better, 2% better, 3% better. And I'm going to tell you, this is so cool. For 39 years, I walked into my house and my wife would be like, oh, I give a kiss. I go kiss the kids. Now, because I'm on fire, now because I have this new edge, okay, when I walk in, I can hear my kids running to me. My wife's like, hey, baby. It's like they're looking for me. It feels so good to know that, that this person I always wanted to become is actually happening. So the skill part, obviously, you got to take care of people. I know you guys have a great relationship. I know you and your brother, you know, your family, but also you guys have a, a gentleman's agreement, the way that we take care of business. All that's important. But when we all decide to get physically fit, I'm gonna tell you the closing, the selling, the influencing, the persuading, the speaking, the fire, the drive, the conviction, this is what separates us from the amateurs, okay? Amateurs believe they can only have one or two things. Pros know they can have it all, so we're gonna go pro. Let's okay. go pro. So, hey, thanks, Aaron, appreciate it. But, but anyways, just wanna tell you, and you guys can finish off with that, and I appreciate that, but that right there, it's not, it's not, it's, it's Elliott Army Division, it's their fitness division right and you know it's crazy because it, by the way I'm gonna tell everybody it's five hundred and ninety seven dollars for 90 days that's two hundred dollars a month yeah it, it's nothing we, we built the program that everybody could get into so that they can get their lives completely changed and this isn't where we make our money this where we make our money is getting people in great shape Mario and then me and you go into some heavy coaching programs because now I can actually talk to you like somebody who can understand what I'm saying definitely because we're gonna get ready to go to war people are like what do you mean get ready to go to war right here dude right here everything we do is right here 
How many times do we talk ourselves out of something? How many times do we work slow, act slow, don't write shit down? You know what I'm saying? We gotta be fast. Yeah. Speed. You know what I'm saying? You got a good idea, man. You better do it now, because if not, someone else is gonna do it. You're gonna look up and be like, oh man, I was gonna do that. You know? And plus, anything that you want right now, since we're in a world full of amateurs, right? Amateurs, now's the time for us to attack. You know God made us to be warriors, right? Well, most people are whiners and freaking complainers and wor warriors. Not not warriors, but like they were warriors. Yeah. Yeah, warriors. warriors. We're made to be warriors, like attacking and protecting our family. And by the way, I'll say one last thing, and then you, you can you guys can kill it. Security. Security is something that you should find with inside you. When I'm at the kitchen table with my wife and my kids, I know they're warned to know that their father, okay, my wife, her husband, is always going to take care of them. I don't find my security in cars, in money, okay, in my job. I find it in me. If I lose it all today, I'll have it all back in a few months. Just test me. <laughs> so it's cool. I'm not worried about it. This is the kind of man that we need to start seeing in the world again. One that protects his family fiercely. One that protects his, his team fiercely. Your team needs to know, hey, something comes against us. Economy goes bad. Rates get high. Loans aren't easy to get anymore. We're working for the best boss in the world. We're good. We create our own economy. We create our own reality. We're good. Where everybody out there is bitching, we're in heaven. We're good. You guys feel me? Sir. Sure. So anyways, find security inside of you. So what we got to do to get that? We got to, number one, get in really good shape, take our family and get them in great shape too. And then number two, we got to, we got to self-develop every day. Every day. That's the key. Okay? And, and, and eventually we'll dissolve our competition. It won't even exist. You're gone. So. That'll work. That energy is contagious. And, and uh, I'm going to let the goons in here so you can, can you know, give them that energy. And, oh, yeah. and I mean, it, it's a really, really good message. Thank you very much, Andy. I appreciate bet. it for coming. Appreciate you guys. I'm here. Down, brother. You guys ready to go punch somebody in the face? Let's, Let's go. go. We'll go punch them all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank all right, you. Let's roll.